So we're going to look at uh, four or five questions about beans, depending on how this goes today. Once we cover the fourth question, then you'll have enough information and skill, um, at least delivered here today, that you could answer all the uh, assignment questions. Ultimately, we're, ju we're just missing the skills for the one beam question on the assignment. So you can take a look here, and we have this simply supported beam. Now, simply supported is the easiest configuration here, which is this and this. So remember that these things here, um, although I've drawn them last time, I drew them like this. So this is a roller, and that's a pin. So this is a pin here. This is going to be a pin here, and that's going to be a roller. So this is just a cheaper way of drawing a roller. It's kind of like the lazy way, the lazy way if you want. So if you were to draw the free body diagram or the force diagram for this uh, situation, I'm just going to screenshot this from my personal notes. These answers are available on Blackboard. So if, you're, if you have the solutions in front of you, you're basically going to see what I'm going to be putting on the screen. I'm going to abstain from, uh, from writing too much today, like handwriting, uh, so we can just make the delivery a bit more efficient. So take a look carefully at the free body diagram, or the force diagram, if you prefer. Why are there two forces here? Can someone tell the class why are there two forces here, but only one force there in this model? So why does this one have a horizontal force? It's pinned. Thank you, Sean. So you see here, when you have a pin, you're supposed to put two forces perpendicular to each other. And to the surface, they should be perpendicular and parallel. A roller is allowed to move sideways. You can move sideways. So that's why we just have the one force. Now, many of you, by intuition or just simple observation, will say, well, why are we putting this force here at all? because it's zero. And you are correct, it is zero. But the thing is, is that you should still always put it in your model, because in general, it won't be zero. And if you're wondering, in, this, in this, uh, these exercises that we're doing today, the fifth one, which we may or may not cover depending on the time, the fifth one uh, has a force that's going this way at an angle, so then it ha this one has to be here to fight this guy off a little bit, to neutralize it to neutralize its horizontal component. So what forces in addition to the reaction forces exist? Well, this beam is, if, if it didn't have any mass to it, then it would just, this would not be even a physics question that we'd be interested in. But this thing does have a mass to it, which is the weight. See, there's no other external forces. So the only force acting down in this case is the weight of itself being pulled. So this force here, this weight here, has to be counteracted by the reaction forces here and here. Um, where does the weight act? We have to assume, and we should just do this by common sense, but we assume that it's a uniform material. This beam is uniform throughout. It's like the same material everywhere. Every cross-section, every, every sample you take is the same density, etc. So therefore, we assume that the weight acts halfway, right in the middle. Now, if you go right in the middle, half of 3.6 is 1.8, so that's why those numbers are there. And we can calculate the weight. Now, you should be able to calculate the weight here. Some people have already handed in this assignment. I'm not trying to scare anybody here, but maybe like a half a dozen people have handed it in already from two classes, from two sections. So if you're like, oh, I didn't hand it in, I'm, I'm not, you know, whatever, I could have done a, don't worry about it. Perhaps they watch the video ahead of time, who knows. So the weight of this object is right there. I'm just going to put that there. Now, look at this. Mass times 9.81. Now, one thing I was uh, very picky about on your assignments was the direction. So I'd say out of about 40 students in your class, perhaps uh, one, maybe like 10, maybe 10 even bothered putting directions on things. So if you didn't put these directions on your assignment, don't be, don't be freaking out when you see that you lost like 0.4 on your assignment for that. Because you did, there's four questions that had it, a direction. And each of them I took off 0.1 um, because they were separate questions. So like you might have got like 0.9 out of one. So basically you lost 
a tenth of a percent on your assignment. Or if you want for the course, you lost one one hundredth of a percent of your course. So if you didn't get 100 and you got 99.99, it's because you didn't put the direct direction. Uh, okay, anyway, that was a bad joke. Um, so let's talk about what um, equations will give us equilibrium. So there are three variables here. We have R1, R2, R3, which represent the uh, magnitudes of the reaction forces. What's R1 equal to? Anybody want to throw that in the chat? What is R1 equal? Yeah, it's zero. And the reasoning it's zero is because there's only one force acting in that direction. So here's the, uh, here's the math for it. Sorry, whenever I add a screenshot, it always scrolls down to the middle of the page for some reason. So there, the net force in the X direction is zero. Let's color these up here a little bit, give it some flavor. Let's go with the green. So that's the first thing we have, which is that the net force in the X direction is zero. So that means that the reaction number one is zero. Again, you can see these solutions on, they're already posted on Blackboard, but it's just nice to, uh, to have them on standby here. We also wanna talk about the Y direction. Now in the Y direction, we have one force acting down and two forces acting up. So, yes, I am using two screens. Yeah, yeah, I'm using two screens. I got the, uh, I got like, I, I can't really show you it, but I, I am using two screens. Um, yeah, otherwise I can't do it. It does like a telescoping thing. If I try to share my own screen, it'll do some telescoping effect, which is weird. Or I'm, I'm basically uh, blind to what's happening in the chat. This way I can see your chat. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go into the next equation now. Normally, I would do the net force in the y direction, and I will do that actually. Let me just do that for a second here. But I'm going to I'm going to hide some of the uh, stuff. So that's what you have in the y direction. It seems a little bit boring, as you can see, because uh, yeah, you know, whatever goes down should equal whatever goes up in terms of forces. But we still have one more thing to play with, which is the moment equation. So this is the one that really tells you or un unlocks the question. So it's the moment balance that really gives you the final hint of how to solve this question. You could find the moment about A, B, or C. But in, if you recall our chats in the, uh, in the lesson last week, I like to put the moment, uh, the location around the point at which the most or the maximum number of unknowns is present. So here I have two forces acting at A. If you're not sure where to do it, um, most often you want to do the moment balance. You can do it anywhere, but you want to do it somewhere easy, which is usually where one of the reaction forces is located. So basically one of the supports. So if I do the moment balance, I chose A. When I did this on my own, I chose A and I'll just drop the answer in here. And if you do the moment balance around A, that's right here. Let's take a look here. Well, this is the part that I'll go slowly with you. This is the part that's going to be the weird part. So here's A. And now what you want to do is find out what each of the lines of actions, so there's four forces here. But when you look at the first two, the lines of actions go right through A. So those forces will not rotate the beam around A. The only two forces that will do rotation are W and R3. W is going clockwise, which we know is negative. And R3 is going counterclockwise, which is positive. How far is W from A? How far is this distance? Well, it's 1.8. And how far is R3 from A? its line of action. Well, it's this yellow distance, which is 3.6. And why are there minus and plus signs? Because as I note here, it's going clockwise, which is negative. That's why there's a minus sign there. And the other one's counterclockwise, so it's positive. So that's why there's a minus sign here. Whoops, I don't even know if I should color that. 
let's do that nice and effective like that, okay? Whoops. I can tell already that there's less people doing lessons on Blackboard today, and it really proves to me that it's the uh, it's the system itself that slows down when I try to draw, not my computer, because I'm running all kinds of stuff on my computer right now. Anyway, we have R3. We can just solve that with some easy algebra. And once you have that, there's a couple of things I want to comment about. These are very small things, but um, the units. So this is 11,772. And then the answer will also be in Newtons here, 5,886. You might be wondering, why did I go to kilonewtons? In, uh, in applications and construction, you're not going to really represent forces in Newtons on a structure because Newtons tend to end up with a very large number. So most often what you'll see on, on in most engineering diagram, like uh, modeling or forces that you see in practice, they're kilonewtons or more. So that's why you see I wrote the answer in kilonewtons right here. The only thing left to do is to get R2. So to find R2, you just plug that in there. And also you know what the weight is because you know the weight as well. So what I'll do is I'll just put an arrow there and I'll put an arrow there. And now you can write down R2 here. I'll just handwrite it. So R2 is equal to, well, um, you want to make sure that you use uh, kilonewtons here. So this is 11.77. So that's going to be 11.77. I think I might be better if I type this. Let's just type it. Hang on a second, people. So it's going to be uh, the weight, which is 11.77 kilonewtons. Minus just the magnitude of R2, sorry. 11.77 kilonewtons minus uh, 5.89 kilonewtons, which equals 5.89 kilonewtons. Now, it's obviously there's a little bit of a rounding issue here, but if you get more digits, you would actually see this correctly. Okay, so the reason that it's not like the reason that that number there is not this is like if you go nine and nine, it's 18. This should be an eight here. But there's a little bit of a rounding off issue that I have here, so don't sweat that too much. But the, the big thing I want to point out here is that R2 is equal to 5.89 kilonewtons up. Any comments about the two answers? What do you notice about R2 and R3? What do you guys notice about R2 and R3? They're both up, and what about their what about their magnitude? They're equal. This is like I call this the South Park uh, marker. Look at it; it's got like some glittery thing going on there. Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. Anyway, so um, so we have R two and R three that they're equal. Can you explain why they would be equal, Sean? It's evenly distributed weight. And so it would be equal. Yeah, it's it, it is the fact of the, of that even distribution of the weight. Um, so when you have symmetry in a problem, you do not need to do this entire analysis. This analysis here is actually overkill. You should be able, with common sense, to look at this picture and answer it in less than in less than a minute. Because the only thing you really need to do is calculate the weight and divide by two. So the cheap answer is to say, well. The weight is 11,772 newtons, and it's going to be equally shared or supported by R2 and R3, and R1 is zero because there's no other lateral forces. So you don't have to go through the entire marathon of the question that I just did. The reason I presented it that way is because what if you had a hard question where it wasn't obvious? So let's take a look at the next question. 
Now, keep in mind, this question was a 1,200 kilogram uh, bean. And you notice this next question is also a 1,200 kilogram bean. So there's a couple of things I'm going to steal from here. I'm going to take this and this. Because it's the same thing. I deliberately made the weight every, the, the same thing every time. I figured why change the weight? It doesn't really like, you know, profoundly change anything in the question. So what's the point of just changing numbers that don't really value? I want to value the, uh, the, the relationship between the two, two diagrams. Notice in this question here, the 25 kilonewton force is actually in the middle as well. So you could answer this question as, in, in a minute or less. Let's talk about the reactions. There's a pin here. So the pin has two reaction forces, and then the roller has the one. Immediately, the pin force, the X component, which I call here R1, is zero because it's the only force acting sideways. However, in the Y direction, there are four forces. So we can equate all those forces and write uh, an equilibrium in the Y direction, which I will just do right now. So when I write down equilibriums, equi equi equilibrium equations, sorry, I always like to, uh, to, to be strict about how I deal with units. So in this case, I expanded the 25 kilonewtons into 25,000 newtons. There are two forces acting up and there's two forces acting down. It's unlike last week, you don't have to worry about which way it is. Like, I'm pretty sure you can agree with me that both of the reactions are gonna act upward. So there you have an equilibrium in the Y direction. The only thing that remains is for us to calculate the, um, the moment equilibrium so that we, to, uh, to find R2 and R3. Because this equation here, we don't, we have two unknowns. We have R2 and R3, which are unknown. We know what W is. W is right here. I mean, I can just do that. Whoops. W is just this quantity here. So that's good. So let's find a second equation by using a moment equilibrium. So I'll do the moment equilibrium here. I'll do the moment about A is zero again. So this tells us the following. So it's going to be uh, the following. I'll just, I'm going to write down my template and then I'll explain everything that I wrote down. That's my moment uh, template. So two minuses and a plus. Let's talk about why there's two minuses. So we have the 25 kilonewton, which is going to be minus because it's counterclockwise, the weight, which is also minus, and then R3, which is plus. So those are the three uh, forces that are generating a rotation uh, or a moment about A. So we can talk about each of them separately here. So we have uh, W and 25,000. So I'll do that here. 25,000 times 1.8. I'm doing these in newtons here. W, which is 11,772 times 1.8. And then R3, which is the variable that we can solve for. And that's at a distance of 3.6. Do you guys have any questions about this statement? This is the heart of the question right here. This is the hardest part. Who feels confident with this statement that I've highlighted? Who's confident about what I wrote down here? I got two. Anybody else? There should be 11 other people here, 11 people in total. Anybody else feel good with this? Are you guys thinking about building code? Yeah. Uh, All right, well, definitely look over this, these, uh, these few examples that we're doing today before Friday 
because one of these examples uh, relates very closely to your assignment, okay? The, the fourth one, the fourth question we do today is very similar to your assignment. So if you clean that up, I'm going to just solve it without like showing the algebra there. I'm, this is a question that's very low level for most people here, I hope. So if we do that, I got 18,386 newtons. Now, I'm going to write down here up or down. It's just the magnitude. This is just the magnitude. But now that you know what R3 is, you can, you can go back and get uh, R2. So what I'll do is I'll just take an arrow from this guy and go like that. Because now you can just say that uh, R2 plus R3, which we know now, equals W plus 25,000. And don't be shocked because R2 is going to be the same answer. And it's the same answer because of symmetry. So every single question that I've shown you here has symmetry. And the reason I did that was because when you're doing these in class, you want to pick a few questions to start with that are that are easy because you want to have answers that you expect. I wanted to solve these first two questions deliberately, uh, questions that you know what the answer should be based on common sense. Because the 25 kilonewtons in the middle and the weight of the object, which is 11.7 uh, kilonewtons or 11.8, it, let's do that in our head here, right? What's 25 plus, uh, plus uh, 11? Forget about the sevens here. That's 36. 36 divided by 2 is 18. You see the 18s here? I'm just doing a quick estimate. Okay? So you see that they're both 18 something, 18 something kilonewtons. So I, I really want you to be aware that you could, that you should be able to uh, be able to pick those off. So let's just summarize the two answers here for R2 and R3. Oops. Just a second. I love PowerPoint. So I'm going to hide the evidence in a second. There, okay. Let's put some check marks there. So there you have it. So that question there is another question with symmetry, but uh, the of the remaining three questions, only one more has symmetry and then the other two don't. So this next question here, this next question here also has symmetry. So it's a little bit disappointing. I'll, I will, uh, I will do the question, but really the one that we want to focus on is this one, which is with one of the forces present. This question is very similar to your assignment, so we'll, we'll definitely cover that one. But first, let's do this one. So uh, in this case, we have two forces which are equally uh, distant from the respective edges of the beam. So this beam is still 3.6 meters. So we still have a lot of the same things going on here. I'm going to copy and paste the, uh, the free body diagram and some of the early calculations, which are really, really familiar, identical, I should say, in terms of the uh, equations below. So let's take a look carefully. I'm just going to zoom in. We don't need the original question anymore. There we go. So what you have is uh, a pin here with two reactions, a roller with one reaction, the weight of the object in the middle acting down, and then at a uh, quarter and three quarter of the span, uh, you can do, if you take a look here, nine, 18, nine, that's a quarter, three quarters if you do fractions. So a quarter and three quarter span, we have two 25 kilonewton loads. So this, you might be wondering, where would you see this in real life? 
Well, maybe it's like a, a viaduct, and then this is not a beam, but it's a section, and then the sections repeat. So think of it like a repeating pattern. So imagine like little Legos. You have this piece here, then you have another one here, then another one here, and it keeps on going. That's where you would see this kind of thing. Or maybe this is just someone's deck in their backyard, and it's just a, a, a beam on their deck, and then there's obviously loads that it's supporting from above, some type of a symmetry there. Although 25 kilonewtons is a lot of uh, force for uh, for a deck. It's like 2,500 pounds or something. It's pretty pretty big. So anyway, we know that the reaction force in the x direction is zero because there's no other lateral forces. So we'll st I'm just going to highlight this all in yellow because this stuff here is like stuff I can kind of discuss like we did before. We need to talk about equilibrium in the y direction and also the moment calculation. And then we should have two equations which will give us what we need. So let's, uh, let's do the, mo the equilibrium in the y direction. So if we do the equilibrium in the y direction, this part's pretty easy because all you're doing is introducing two forces and the weight. So I'll just put that up here. So this again is something like anything that's in a colored box like that. I find I'm just trying to say that it's like easy things. I'm not saying it's obvious. I'm just saying it's easier. That's all. So take a look here. We have R2 and R3, which are acting upward. And then you have our 25, 25 kilonewtons and W acting downward. Notice that I converted the kilonewtons into newtons. And this is more to um, just make things consistent with the weight. So we have R2 and R3, an equation there. And uh, now we need to find another equation that relates R2 and R3. So this is the idea of using the moment equation. And we're going to find the moment about A. So I just keep on choosing A because A has two reaction forces there. So Let's write down the moment equation for A. I'm going to uh, take a screenshot of it from my answer key. Don't worry, I'll go through this carefully, people. I know that it looks scary. Some of you might look at this and be really intimidated. But it's not... Uh, it's not that different from what we did earlier. So we have here um, the moment about A. Now, what forces are going to generate a moment about A that's not zero? Well, R1 and R2, forget about those, because they go right through A. Their lines of action go through A. But let's take a look at the ones that are acting downward. We have this one here. I'll highlight it in red. This one here, and then this one here. Those are the red ones. And there they are right here. See? One, two, and three. You see how they're all negative? See how they have a negative sign in front? Because they're all clockwise. They're all going this way. They're all going to turn the beam clockwise. Maybe it's a little bit too... Uh... That's okay. It looks a little thick, but it's okay. Now, R3, R3 is not acting that way. It's acting upward. So it's the only force that's going to go counterclockwise. That's why this one's plus. See the plus sign here? That's because it's going counterclockwise. So that's a, that's a simple math question now that you can solve. And I just I did a couple of steps of algebra here to wrap that up. But eventually, eventually you'll get R3. And R3 is equal to 30.9 kilonewtons up. 30.9 happens to be half of this number in kilonewtons, I mean. So if I go here and I plug that in there, then you can get R2 is also the same answer. Let me know in the chat. How are you guys doing with this? How's everybody doing with this thing here? All 
Are beams easier than trusses? So this is one thing that I love to do as your professor, which I swore I would do, I vowed that I would do when I was a student back in the day in engineering. I hated doing the last day of class and putting some nasty questions. And then that was like the hard question on your assignment or on your exam, if you were writing an exam. So I said, you know what, let me do trusses. I did them last week with you, which were, were a little bit tougher than these. And then I said, let me, let me end off the, the semester with easier stuff, which is this beams. Oh, uh, I tell you, I, I don't know if I told your section the story or for the other section or if I said it in the fall. But I had, a, I had a professor one time, it was an electrical engineering course, and the very last lecture basically represented a third of my final exam on one lecture. I'm not kidding you. And I was like, oh, it's only one lecture, I'm not going to focus on it too much, and it ended up being a gigantic chunk of my final exam. So was, I was very displeased. So anyway, here's the question that <laughs> you're welcome, Sean. Oh, thank you. You guys have been a great audience. You've been a great, I don't say audience. Audience is like passive in my opinion. No, you guys have been a great group of uh, teammates. We're teammates here. Trying to get through this thing together. Trying to get through this online stuff together. So here's your last question with me. Uh, before we, uh, I might just call it a day after this question. Just wanted to make sure we covered these four questions. And uh, then this fifth one here, I can uh, I can do it for those that want to stick around. But I'll take a break, and then whoever wants to stick around can stick around for number fifteen. Anyway, so I'm just going to look at the assignment. I want you to just take a look at this question and think about how you would solve it. Maybe set up the equations if you haven't already. Just excuse me for a second. I'm on a different screen. I'm just looking at the assignment. Yeah, it's question number three on part two. Thank you, Nikita. You saved me the search. So, awesome. So, yeah, definitely this question here. Now, Obviously, everybody has different numbers, so on your assignment, you know, you have to change all the numbers. I didn't really notice any issues there in your section. I think everybody un understood what I meant because, if you recall, I did a question on my lab where you had to adapt it based on your student number or on the last four digits of your student number. So let's take a look here. We have uh, the beam and the free body diagram. So there's a couple things here that we can just put out of the way, which is uh, Let's let's put let's do the easy stuff first. So the easy stuff here would be the drawing of the free body diagram and the equilibrium in the x and y direction. So I'm going to big a big copy and paste here. Do not get too rattled. So I'll leave it on the screen. I'm going to give you about a minute. I want to give you one minute to look through this. I want you to go line by line. If you need to put your pen on the screen and just kind of point at it, go line by line through this and see, see if you can make sense of all the writing that I have here. So in one minute, I'll resume class. I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning thinking it was the first day of the semester, not the last day of our classes with all the snow outside. Who else got confused when they looked out the window this morning? Just me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to complain. I don't know about you, but when I sleep, if I open the window a little bit, the nice cold breeze, it feels good. Yeah, so Dogen, you're like me. I, I, I didn't actually, I didn't even put my snow tires on this year. I didn't bother because I barely drove. And if I did drive up north, uh, uh, a cottage there, it was basically uh, like during the holidays or whatever. It was like, um, only if it wasn't snowing. <laughs> yeah, it's like Twilight Zone. Okay, 
All right, let's answer this question here. So, uh, so if we take a look here, we have the following. Okay, let's check off the things that are easy. This is easy because it's every single question is the same. This is easy because there's only one force acting in the x direction. I'm not saying this, I'm not saying it dismissively to you, like you should know this. I'm just saying it should be easy. Eventually, it should be easy for you that you can calculate the weight because it's 1,200 kilograms. Now, in the in the y direction, there is equilibrium based on the four forces. See, we have the R2 and R3. Those are acting up. That's why these are here. And on the equal sign. Then you have the two forces that are acting down, which are W and 25. That's why there's two forces here. Uh, 25,000, I should say. So this first equation, this first stuff here, that I'll, I'm just going to highlight this in yellow, because this stuff here should be like in the bank. So all that we have to do now is create a moment equation to rip uh, finish off this uh, this question. So we need a, an equation in terms of R2 or R3 so that we can solve for them and then eventually that solves the system here. So I'm going to find the moment about A because that's been uh, tried and tested here and it worked really well. So with A we have a uh, Let's see how many forces will generate a non-zero moment. So let's talk about the ones that act in the clockwise direction. There's a clockwise one there. There's a clockwise one there. And then we have a counterclockwise one over here. And then these guys do not generate a moment, so I'm not looking at them. Why? Because their lines of action go right through A. When the force's line of action goes through the point of rotation, then it generates no moment or zero moment. So this is the heart of the question here. Let's put this in blue. We'll soften the mood a bit. Okay, so let's take a look here. So we have uh, in, in Newton's, we have 25,000 Newtons, and, and uh, that one over there is this guy here. Let me just highlight a bit better. Oops. And then this W here is the weight, and that's this term here. Notice how those terms are negative because they are counterclock, sorry, they are clockwise moments. In contrast, we have R3, which is going to trigger a positive or counterclockwise moment. That's why there's a plus sign there. Once you uh, have that equation, that's a very simple algebraic equation with one variable, which is R3. And you can solve it using a little bit of algebra and get 12.1 kilonewtons up. Now, in the question, the total downward force is 36.7. You see that? That's the total force. Yeah, there is a solution. There is a solution, Ayo. I, I, post, I, I discussed it at the beginning of class, and I'll discuss it after this question, okay? I'll discuss your question right after we finish this one. So notice that R3 is 12 kilonewtons going up, but if you look at the total downward force, it's closer to 37. You see 37 here? So what you notice is that the, uh, the reaction forces are not the same. So R2 and R3 are different. In fact, you can, you can actually predict it using simple ratios. It is possible to do this with very simple ratios, uh, like a lever, and say that 25 kilonewtons and, and the weight are each going to contribute a certain amount to the reactions. Um, anyway, I'm just going to try to solve the question before I get creative with you. So once we have our three, you can go here, and there's R2, and you have R3. So you can take those together and solve for R2, and I'll just leave that as a very short algebraic exercise. And eventually, you get R2 as this. 
I'll just put that here. You get that. So you notice that R3 and R2 are not identical. They're not identical. And if you're wondering, is there a way to find out the answer without any, uh, any of this uh, moment balancing, like more like a shortcut? Uh, there is. I'm not going to give you the most organized explanation for it, but I'll do it quickly here. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of a budget. R2 and R3. So what I'm showing you now is how I would do it in my head. This is how I would answer the question with mental math. Obviously, I might grab a calculator if the numbers are brutal, but if the numbers are easy, you can, you can actually solve this in your head. Let's start with the weight. The weight is this. You see that, 11,772? Because the weight is in the middle, then R2 and R3 get the same amount. So 11,772 over 2, and then 11,772 over 2. They both get the same amount. Think of it as you're sharing, uh, you're sharing your spoils after you uh, win a prize. Now over here, we have to talk about the 25. So the 25 is what percentage along the way? It's going to be, let's take a look here, it's 25% along the way. So I'm trying to base this on my memory but it might not do the best job. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to grab my calculator and double check my thought process. Okay, so it goes like this. The 25,000 is here and here. But the issue is, what proportion of it does each get? So... If you look at the ratio, it's 1 to 3. Can Let me know in the chat. Does that make sense that this is a 1 to 3 ratio? Let me know in the chat. It's really important that you explain, that you understand that. Do you understand that that distance is a 1 to 3 ratio? Okay. Anybody else? I got two people. These numbers here are a 1 to 3 ratio. Okay, cool. So get this. Look how, look how pretty this is. What's, the, what's 1 plus 3 is 4. So what you do is the 3 goes to this guy and the, and the 1 goes to that guy. So you get here 3 quarters of this guy and 1 quarter of this guy. Now someone please grab their pocket calculator there and, uh, and, and add this up for me. Can you add that up on your regular calculator? See if you get 24.6 24 or 24,600 roughly. This is just two significant digits, okay? If you want, do it to three sig figs. Isn't that cool? I got, specifically, I got 24, I'm doing it on my calculator as well, 24636. And if you do the other one, You get 12136. So what have I just what have I just shown you people? I've shown you that you can take any beam, I don't care how many forces are acting on it, and you can use simple ratios and solve the whole thing. As long as the forces are acting vertically. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome? It doesn't matter what the question is, you can use simple ratios. So I'll just make a note about that here, and I'm going to, I'll say here, simple ratio method. So what I showed you there is optional, but if you want to use it, you're more than welcome to. There is one caveat, there is one warning, and if I'm going to open up the assignment here, I do have to open up the assignment to explain my reasoning. Just give me a second as I open this up.
So you, if you look here, you notice that the question says something. Let's take a look. Okay, so this one here, it doesn't say. It says do whatever you want. There's no restrictions. You see this question here? This is just like the one we did. You can do whatever you want. You, know, you can use shortcuts. You can use ratios. I don't care. Okay? But the last question, it specifically says here, use a moment equilibrium is about point B. I'm telling you to do a moment equilibrium at B. It's not optional. Normally, I don't tell people how to do things, but the reason I chose this uh, restriction here in how you present your answer is it makes my life a little bit easier in terms of comparing students' answers, uh, in terms of like uh, marking them thoroughly and efficiently. If everybody chose a different way, I can still mark it, but this way it's a little bit clearer and I can give a more um, uniform or fair grading system for the class. So that's why I'm telling you to use B here. Anyway, it's 9.55. I'm just going to pause the video. Actually, no, I'll keep on talking here. It's 9.55. I want you to uh, I want you to take a break for uh, ten minutes, and for those who want to stick around, I will answer the last question, which involves uh, a force which is not vertical, and that's about it. Okay. So let me pause the recording now. It's uh, we'll take a break until let's take a break until ten ten. So this question here is an extension question, just a more of a difficult situation. We have a force that is angled this time. It's not directly vertical to the beam. And uh, the loading here is realistic. In everyday life, you know, you don't have forces that are directed straight down into a structure. They, are, they could be at angles in some way. And you can envision or imagine uh, scenarios where this might occur. In this case, we have just the 125 kilonewton force acting downward to the left at an angle of 40 degrees. Um, I don't know. I don't know how long my lab is available afterwards. I think it, I think you have it until the end of the, uh, the academic year. I do. I'm not sure if it's until the end of April or until the end of uh, until the end of summer. Um, I, can, I I have to ask the publisher and get back to you. So the force here is uh, at an angle of 40 degrees. And uh, we need to do equilibrium calculations. So that requires the force or free body diagram. So let's do that here. But my, 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 my thoughts are about the textbook. The MyLab is a software package. Really what happens is you're paying for the software package in order to do your course materials. And, the, and uh, that gives you access to the textbook. It's not the other way around. You're not buying the textbook to use the software. You're paying for the licensing to the software and that gives you access to the textbook. But I'll confirm that with you um, by asking the publisher that question. So, in this case, uh, we have five forces, and let's do equilibrium. But this time, I just can't be lazy and copy and paste stuff, at least not too much. So let's take a look here and uh, discuss the copy and pasting. Yeah, but let's discuss this net force here. Notice that in the x direction, the net force is not zero. Sorry, it's zero, but the force itself is not zero. Because uh, this R1 here, it has to neutralize some of that. How much of it? This much of it. And you can draw a triangle there to, to describe that. In fact, I'll, I'll put this vector here, actually. It's a bit more logical to put it there because then you, because it's acting at a quarter of the span. So whatever this component is, well, you know your trigonometry. That's 25,000 cos 40. 
So that's what R1 has to be. R1 has to neutralize. So this force here has to neutralize this force here. So that's why we get this equation. And, and that gives you the value of R1. So that part is kind of like not too bad. And it really doesn't uh, add too much uh, danger to the question. Similar in the y direction, in the y direction, we're, we're finding the equilibrium between the following forces. This force and then these forces as well. So what you have is two forces acting down and uh, two forces acting up. So it, it is reminiscent of what we saw earlier, except we just have to do a projection, if you want, or a component, however you want to say it. You can say component or projection. Both are good. Because really we just want the vertical part of that force because that's what's uh, generating the moment uh, the uh, force in the downward direction let's use green here so let's just take a look here what the heck's going on don't panic I will discuss so we have here upward we have R2 and R3 see these are the upward ones and in the downward direction, we have W, which is our old friend here. And that's the same number as the first and second and then third and the fourth question. The only difference is this vector here. See this vector here? It's based on the uh, vertical components. So it's sine 40. See, 25,000 sine 40. So I'm just throwing in the sine 40 there. That's the only difference, okay? And you can clean up the numbers as you wish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little uh, little screenshot of this, just that piece there, because we need it later. We need that little that little tidbit of information. I'll put it right here. Okay, so that's twenty five thousand sine forty. Okay. So basically, as far as you're concerned in this question now, that vertical component and that horizontal component are going to be separate entities. So we're not going to consider, we're not looking at this, see this diagonal vector? We don't care about it anymore. We're only going to deal with the components of it. Because they. you could do it with this 25 uh, kilonewton force, it's just fine. But the way that I'm showing you ultimately results in the exact same mathematics, which whichever way you choose to, uh, to approach it. But we need to do a moment calculation about A. So this is the uh, the last piece of the puzzle here. So we're going to do the moment about A. And how many forces are going to induce a moment about A? Let's take a look in yellow here. This I'll leave on the colors, okay? I'll leave these colors up. So these yellow forces here are the three forces or components thereof that will induce a moment. The ones that I highlight in pink will not. Those three forces will not induce a moment because those three forces have lines of action which go directly through A. So all we have to do is do a moment balance for the yellow stuff. So I'll do this one with my uh, typing here. Since there are three forces, we need to figure out clockwise and counterclockwise. Since two forces are going down, they will be producing counterclockwise moments. And there's only one force going up, so that's why that's one plus sign. That's why we have two minus signs and, and one plus sign. So the minus ones are going to be the 25,000 sine 40. I'll write that here. Which is acting at a distance of 0 0.9. This is in newtons and meters, respectively. W, which is easy, at a distance of 1.8. Instead of writing W there, I will put in the value for W, which was 11. 772 and let's just put our nice grammar there okay and then in the other case we'll have r3 which is acting at a distance of the span of the beam which is 3.6 meters you can solve that at your leisure later shouldn't be too dangerous you're going to get 9903 newtons which we can conclude that r vector 3 I'm saying it like I'm programming it, so don't mind me. I'm talking like a computer programmer now. 9.90 kilonewtons up. 
And now you're good to go, friends. Uh, we got this because we got our three. We can go get our two now, and you're done. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do uh, – that's like – that's the professor being lazy. Whoops. I'm not too lazy, hopefully. And you'll get R2 is equal to 17.9 kilonewtons up. I'll explain the dot, dot, dot in a second. What I'm doing here is, I mean, it's just one, one key step here. Once you have R3, you go back here. Whoops. Once you have R3, you go here. And then you come back and you get R2. That's all. And that's it. That's all I got for you. So uh, before I uh, take any questions, I just want to tell you thank you. Uh, I really, really had a great time teaching you this year. And I hope that you as well enjoyed the experience. A thousand times more I would have liked to be in person, but I still think that the uh, the teamwork that we had, and in some ways the friendship and camaraderie that we've had this year, has really given me insight into how valuable the experience is to be a professor, but more important, a teacher. So uh, thanks again for a wonderful year, everybody.